Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Golf Victor, or in my native language, Di da da, di da 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 da, da da di, di di da. Here to talk a little more about my favorite antenna, the Kite Zep, or Balloon Zep. And here again is the basic design for that type of antenna. A one-half wavelength radiating element and a quarter of a wavelength feed line comprising ladder line or window line ideally. Now in a video just uh, earlier today I said that uh, resonance in a feed line is to be avoided and a quarter of a wavelength feed line most certainly is a resonant length of line. What gives? Am I contradicting myself? Well the answer would have to be yes and no. First of all the feed line in a ZEP antenna is going to radiate inherently to some extent anyway because it is not a truly balanced antenna whereas this is a truly balanced line. This doesn't have to be exactly a quarter of a wavelength but if it is there's a possibility that you will be able to do without the antenna tuner. But I recommend for an antenna tuner and uh, well I actually recommend an antenna tuner for all ZEP antenna arrangements, a true balanced antenna tuner. It needs to be capable of feeding a truly balanced feed line, even though this feed line isn't truly balanced. And the best uh, tuner that I know of for that purpose is made by a company called Palstar. I have one of their tuners. It's not this particular one. You will lay down a pretty penny to get this tuner, but it'll be worth it if you really want a kite zip antenna for the 160 meter band. And to some extent also 80 meters. The first time I tried an antenna like this on 80 meters, a whole new world opened up to me. 80 meters sounded like 20 meters in the daytime on a good summer day, but this was nighttime in the winter. I worked Europe, I worked the South Pacific, I worked the world on 80 meters with an antenna just like this. I believe it was a relatively calm night and I used a balloon rather than a kite. But this resonant feed line here, if you choose to use that length of line, can serve as a quarter wavelength matching section. And chances are pretty good that with the characteristic impedance of a line like this, somewhere on the order of 450 ohms, and the extraordinarily high impedance, purely resistive, at the end of a half wavelength radiating element like this, this quarter wavelength matching section will translate this pure resistance of around 4,500 ohms down to about 45 ohms, thereby again ma making it possible to replace this tuner with nothing more than a ballon coil and possibly getting away with an SWR that your radio can tolerate. That said, 
these antennas exhibit a wide variety of impedances at this point right here and you may not have an impedance that will deliver a standing wave ratio that your um, radio can contend with. Nonetheless, this is my favorite antenna system of all time, but there are safety issues involved. I am not going to recommend, or should I rather say, I am going to recommend that you not try to fly an antenna like this until you are aware of all of the hazards and have taken measures against each and every one. Because the last thing you need to do is get into a lawsuit over your antenna misbehaving and causing somebody a lot of grief and expense. And even worse than that if, would be to have this antenna fall on a power wire and electrocute someone and that would be, I don't think I'd ever sleep again at night if that happened to me and I electrocuted someone so these are potentially dangerous antennas this length one half wavelength wire here is about 270 feet 260 feet or so on 160 meters this right here is somewhere on the order of 130 feet. So you're looking at 400 feet of wire hanging high in the air from a kite or balloon and that is going to pick up a lot of electrostatic charge no matter what kind of weather you're having. And if there's any possibility whatsoever of a thunder shower or thunder snow taking place do not fly an antenna like this unless you want to get you and your radio fried. So, despite all the hazards, if you take precautions against them, and I'll try to make a video outlining some of those precautions, but again, recommending that you not fly an antenna like this until you are fully aware and have taken measures against all possible hazards so that you are as safe as you can possibly be. So, trembling with fear at the prospect of instant death at any moment, enjoy this antenna, particularly in the winter in a cold, lonely night in some place where there's wide open space, get on 160 with one of these and have at it. Fear and all. Stan Jibalisco, W1GV, saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long, which, in my native language, translates to did 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 da did da